Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 7 uh, for October the 16th, 2022. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Out of Slavery to Nationhood. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Confidence Provides Necessary Courage. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, verses 1 through 10. A background scripture is taken from the book of Judges chapter 6 verses 1 through 27. And we'll be studying today from the book of Judges chapter 6 uh, verses 1 and 2 and verses 7 through 16. Our key verse reads, The Lord said to him, Peace! Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. It's taken from the book of Judges chapter 6 uh, verse 23 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to understand how Gideon's feelings of inadequacy were no impediment to God's using him to save Israel in a time of trial. Secondly, to experience awe at God's confidence in you, even when you struggle to believe in yourself. And then thirdly, to answer God's call confidently, trusting that God will be with you. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Blurred Memory. The second outline is entitled, Selective Amnesia. And then the third outline is entitled, Encouraged by God. As always, we thank and praise God for this opportunity to be able to share our lesson with you today. We thank God for keeping us even through difficult challenges of our lives and, and offering us his word and his promises uh, to comfort us uh, even in uh, such circumstances. We want you to get your Bible and uh, be prepared. Uh, you're definitely going to need to be able to take some notes today. We have quite a bit of ground to cover as we go back in history, uh, uh, Israel's history, uh, taking a look uh, from the book of Judges, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and then um, verses 7 through 16. I would encourage you to go back uh, as we look at one of the judges today in the person of Gideon. Uh, you will certainly, uh, I would encourage you to go back to chapter 6, read all of that through chapter 8 of the book of Judges and you'll get uh, sort of the timeline of Gideon's life. And I would also urge you to go back and at least look at uh, the book of Joshua, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, as he faced the final days of his life uh, and, and, and look at the book of Joshua as it uh, uh, reveals to us it's a book of, of conquest and conflict uh, and some of the issues that, that Joshua was struggling with uh, with the nation of Israel uh, particularly in uh, uh, the book of Joshua chapter 7 uh, uh, that conflict almost cost Joshua uh, uh, his, his role, if you will, or his leadership. Uh, and so the problems that plagued Joshua uh, have surfaced uh, in the book of Judges. They have resurfaced. Uh, they have reemerged in a generation who did not know the Lord. Uh, they have reemerged to uncover uh, the apostasy of God's people. And I want us to remember as we study this lesson today, and we certainly will give you as much as uh, uh, time will allow, uh, but I want you to think about the fact that Israel, uh, we're coming to a place in history where uh, a covenant is in play. Uh, the, the covenant that God initiated with the people of Israel is in play. And I also want us to remember uh, typology. Uh, what I mean by that as we study these uh, particular, the book of Judges and as we get into the life of Gideon, 
uh, all of these judges play the role or the type as a deliverer uh, 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 foreshadowing the deliverer that would come uh, in the person of Jesus Christ who uh, uh, and it's interesting because uh, God needed uh, several judges to uh, uh, call upon at particular times in Israel's life uh, uh, but the, the deliverance was not sustained uh, sure they had uh, years of rest if you will even from their enemies but the condition of defection and apostasy uh, serving other gods as we would learn uh, throughout uh, the nation of Israel was one of the things that plagued the covenant uh, and, and, and they should have even from the Mosaic law they should have expected God to react uh, uh, because it was it was put into uh, the law uh, there were consequences for uh, disobedience and there were blessings for obedience so I want to start reading I want to read a little bit of the biblical context that is offered in this lesson from our quarterly and then I want to read a little bit from our lesson standard and then we're going to get right into these outlines because we have quite a bit that we want to unpack but first uh, our quarterly the final verse in the book of Judges adequately captures its content in those days there was no king in Israel and every man did that which was right in his own eyes as taken from Judges uh, chapter 21 verse 25 so this book traces Israel's history from Joshua's death to establishing the monarchy under Saul tragically after the death of Joshua another generation emerged that did not know the Lord nor what he had done for Israel and so in the centuries that followed God's people fell into rebellion and apostasy and simply what that means is that they they defected uh, 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 they 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 turned away from uh, 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 the love uh, uh, their love of God and, and his instruction and commandments and so um, uh, this the book of Judges is a record of some 14 judges who judged ruled and or delivered Israel during this dark period of her history so it was because of Israel's attitude and their defection from the commandments of God that caused uh, or triggered God to act and that it, it caused them to enter into some uh, seven cycles of successive periods of sin oppression and repentance uh, and then and deliverance are identifiable in the book's narrative uh, the people sin uh, they were captured and oppressed and then they pleaded for deliverance and then uh, 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 God uh, 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 was prompted to deliver them because of his faithfulness but the cycle was repeated I want you to keep that in mind and so looking at our lesson standard uh, it talks about the book of Judges features accounts of a series of leaders or judges who arose to rescue Israel from foreign oppressions during the era of 1380 to 1050 BC so these stories fit together to paint a picture of a dreary pattern right the Israelites sin God punished them with a uh, foreign oppression the Israelites repented a deliverer came and peace followed so Gideon uh, the subject of uh, 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 our discussion today uh, this deliverer judge uh, was the fifth of perhaps 14 judges he served in that capacity uh, during the first half of the 12th century. We're going to get into the Midianites a little bit more uh, as we get into this outline and who, who this foreign adversary was 
and exactly how were they oppressing uh, God's people and why, right? And when I was studying this lesson, I would encourage you to read uh, both uh, First and Second Peter. Uh, what I love about Peter, uh, his epistles, is that he uncovers different types of suffering and reasons for it. Right, And so when we have things going on in our lives, I hope that we are, are at least traveling and walking in tune or in step with the Holy Spirit. So uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will remind us, will tell us, uh, encourage us, will chasten us, convict us uh, in terms of our conduct as it relates to the covenant that we are in. Right, We are in a covenant with God through Jesus Christ, right? So let's get into this first outline. We're going to start at Judges chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. And the Bible says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Verse 2. Because of the power, uh, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. So we don't, uh, un unless we do a little bit more in-depth study uh, to see the pattern of uh, of the the idol or the idol worship that Israel practiced. Uh, at first blush in these in this first verse here from Judges chapter 6 it just says that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord but we're not given to know here uh, 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 exactly what that evil is but what we do know is consistent with the practice of idol worship uh, particularly uh, in the promised land uh, of, of Cana that, that God uh, uh, dispossessed the nations of Cana and, and subsequently uh, gave that land to his people and what was consistent uh, with the Canaanite individuals uh, uh, was idol worship, right? All of the different Baals and the Ashtoreths that they served, uh, uh, Israel became complicit uh, uh, after God or prior to uh, entering into the promised land God warned them about this kind of mixing in with these idol worshipers and gods and giving their sons and daughters into marriage and uh, uh, with these particular idol worshipers so it's consistent uh, I, I will just share that with you today but but I want to just look at some of uh, uh, what's going on here with with the Midian, uh, the Midianites or the power of Midian was so oppressive and what exactly they were doing. So for 40 years after Israel's victory over Sisera uh, and the Canaanite army, this is in Judges chapter 4, a superficial show of faith emerged, but the passage of time blurred their memory, this being Israel. So Israel, watch this, they forgot how God had delivered them. So there was an, uh, the next generation reverted to their repeated practice of forsaking God and adopted a blended religion, right? Idolatry mixed with Israelite uh, religious rituals that threatened their spiritual and physical well-being and we should have uh, should be armed enough now with enough biblical knowledge and understanding that we cannot serve two masters right we're told that in the new testament uh, 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 in in the uh, 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 commandments given in the the book of exodus it was clear from moses instruction to the children of israel via god that you shall have no other god besides me. God's, God is very specific about that. So as a result of them mixing in this other religion or idolatry, God allowed seven years of daunting oppression spearheaded by the Midianites. So Midian was joined with the Amalekites and the people of the east. 
these were a nomadic uh, a group from the Syrian desert in this oppressive assault so the Midianites were descendants of Abraham through his secondary wife Keturah that's in Genesis chapter 25 verse 1 and 2 the, but they were Israel's bitter enemies during their wilderness wandering so by the time uh, of Gideon they had formed a hostile coalition and gained the advantage with a large scale use of camels they were swift imposing animals which added to Israel's fear and distress so the territory of Manasseh was the principal target but the regions of Asher, Zebulun, Naphtali, and Ephraim were affected as well. The goal of these uh, of their annual raids was acquisition of Israel's herds, crops, and fruits. Because of these devastating raids, it was unsafe uh, uh, for the Israelites to live in open villages and towns. So these two particular groups of individuals the Amalekites and the Midianites the Lord allowed them to come against his people and take their food right take their sustenance take their provision and so it it, it forced the uh, Israelites to hide in dens and caves and strongholds in the mountain areas of their tribal possessions so their oppression at the hand of the Midianites, watch this, was Israel's own fault. Right? This was brought about because of their disobedience to the covenant relationship, to the laws, to the commandments, to the statutes. God gave Israel a comprehensive set right, of, of laws of regulations to govern their lives to govern their conduct in the nation uh, uh, certainly uh, in the world uh, uh, of uh, or the, in the territory of Cana but for life right this was a perpetual thing this was not something that they were supposed to pick up and put down but because uh, uh, and, and God allowed this thing to happen for seven years right so we have to be, appreciate the fact and be mindful when we study the Word of God when we are looking at the Word of God it's a mirror for us to see ourselves and to evaluate our conduct before God because as sure as you see it in God's Word it should tell you he knows about it right he is aware of it and so God didn't need anybody to tell him what his people were doing he was watching it he was aware of everything uh, uh, that they were doing and how they were mixing and blending in and so it provoked God to anger that's relevant relevant discussion for us today we are told in the New Testament that those that God loves, he chastens. Why does he do that? Because he is raising us, right? The children of Israel were no better than the people that they were living around, but they were a better quality of individuals because of the laws that God gave them, that they would have some structure in their lives, that their conduct would be measured by the commandments of God. So they put that away uh, in terms of obeying God and now they're hiding and trying to protect their food because the enemy is stealing it. So the, the significance of the enemy starving you out and stealing your food means you can't grow, you can't get nourishment, your children can't be nourished. So in essence, they are positioning you by taking your food they are positioning you to die. This is all covered in the Mosaic Law. That God had told his people that if they did not obey him, he would raise up enemies, foreign enemies, foreign adversaries, P 
people and enemies that they do not know. They were serving gods that they did not know in a personal way. They, they, they were serving uh, the, and mixing in these other religions that God had not taught them. So they are blending God in with other gods and they provoke God to anger. And now they are hiding, trying to protect not just themselves, but their food. So they repeatedly, Israel repeatedly said, you know, I'm sorry, but never expressed the godly sorrow that turns one from sin to God. And we do that today, right? We repent of our sins, but it's conditional because we do it again. But I thank God as Gideon, as we get into learning about what God is going to do about this and how God is going to respond and who's he, who he's going to raise up. And keep in mind, we've already had several judges uh, who have come on the scene and subsequently died, but Israel still haven't learned anything. They need another deliverer and they'll need another one after Gideon. And they'll need another one. And they'll need another one. So their behavior, and even though they are remorseful of the things that they're going through, it's not enough to change them for the course of their lives. And we have to be mindful of that. But believers must periodically evaluate their motivation for obedience and faithful, faithfulness to God and his word. That's what I said earlier. We have to look in the mirror right we have to look in the mirror of the word of god so we can be revealed for who we are john chapter 3 when you get time we need to be revealed for who we are and then once the word of god shows you that you are either compliant or out of compliance with the word of god we need to be fasting and praying and repenting of our sins and asking god to deliver us, yes, and equip us, we have something that the, the children of Israel uh, uh, did not have at the time, right? We have the power of the Holy Spirit now through regeneration that can help us with our flesh and can help us in our relationship with, Lord, with the Lord, right? So they were never able to, to stop sinning. So we can be guilty of blurred memories, right? When we spend little time daily in God's presence through prayer, study, and meditation until we need him to get us out of adverse situations and circumstances, right? But we thank God for his grace. But I will share this with you. Don't take God's grace for granted, right? Romans chapter 6, when you have time. But total obedience is still the path to blessings, right? Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? So we need to appreciate uh, uh, the historical account. And I, I would just say this to you concerning history, right? It'll do a couple things for you, right? And I, and I, and I would also uh, uh, give you uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that you can follow up on the statement that I'm about to make but history will either help you in terms of you learning from it or it will it will harm you or it will hurt you because you don't learn from history right this is a template that we can look at and we can see sure the the the, the people in uh, 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 in this text uh, the children of Israel, the Midianites, the Amalekites, Joshua's died, all of these deliverers have, uh, 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 subsequently die, but God is still alive. He has seen generation after generation, right? He cannot die, right? But he sees and he knows and he understands. And, and what I love about God throughout history, he has not changed. You might say, Reverend, why did you say that? Because his integrity is always holy. That's his character. That's who he is. He will always be truthful. That's who he is. He will always be faithful. That's who he is. He will always be a loving God. That's who he is. 
right so even though he is uh, 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 he is responding to his people through chastening them through the enemy he could have wiped them out but he is giving them an opportunity to evaluate this situation for seven years at least at this time take a look at yourself why are you in this cave I gave you some place to stay I gave, I, I've, I've allotted the promised land to you and now you're hiding because you want you want to disobey me right and it's never going to work. Our second outline is entitled Selective Amnesia. This is taken from Judges chapter 6 verses 7 through 10 and again I want to read this from the NIV translation. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian he sent them a prophet who said this is what the Lord the God of Israel says I brought you up out of Egypt out of the land of slavery verse 9 I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hand of all of your oppressors I drove them out before you and gave you their land verse 10 and I said to you I am the Lord your God do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live but you have not listened to me remember we talked about history just a minute ago right now Israel is not learning from their own history and I would submit this to each and every one of us today you have a history let me just ask you a question where has the Lord brought you from do you think about that how many times have the Lord rescued you and I subdued our enemies that were oppressing us we have a a, a countless history book we have a individual history book and we have a corporate history book we always say God bless America he's already done that he's doing that he's been doing that but it's our response to him if we want him to bless America in a corporate sense what should our corporate response be if you want God to bless you in an individual sense and he he does that because you're still alive when you know you should have been gone he brought us out of, of sin and shame and darkness into this marvelous light what is the response and God is reminding them I brought you out of slavery all of us have been in slavery we were enslaved to the power and under the sway of the devil we served him willingly we did everything he told us to do and we knew we was destroy we were destroying ourselves and we did it anyway under the heading of having fun and God saved you he saved me and brought us out and we owe him as the songwriters say we owe him everything right Romans chapter 12 verse 1 2 and 3 it's the reasonable thing that we can do is offer to God a life of sacrifice in light of what he has done in the past and we're still expecting him to do things for us in the future we're still asking uh, praying and asking God to do things but we won't sacrifice ourselves and God is letting them know what is happening to you is your fault right stop blaming the devil for things that you do right greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world everything is not the devil's fault James chapter 1 when you have time some things are birthed and born out of our lust for it and once that lust goes forward then we go into the sin or the rebellion or the the overstepping of instruction then once we move forward in sin then that sin that overstepping brings death 
spiritual and physical death. The consequences are deadly for disobeying God, right? But Israel's failure to permanently remove the Canaan inhabitants became their thorn in the flesh, as God predicted. Following this failure, the angel of the Lord, a pre-incarnate manifestation of Christ, appeared to Israel, right, near Gilgal. Their God reproved them for their disobedience. Watch this. To the covenant that God made at Sinai and their responsibilities toward its fulfillment. Judges chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. So their disobedience forfeited God's protection from the Canaanites military prowess and idolatrous influence. When we don't obey God, right, we open a door for Satan to abuse us, right? We lose, and, and, and Satan is glad to see you overstep the commandments of God. That's your strength. That's my strength. Our strength is in the obedience of God. But we cannot expect God to co-sign on our sinful way. He's not going to do it. He's not going to help you, help me become better sinners. God forbid, right? So he moves that protection or you move that protection or you overstep that boundary of God's laws and instruction and now we are exposed. All right? This is what happened. Israel exposed themselves and the enemy found where they were exposed. They say, we're going to take, the enemy said, I'm going to take your food. All right? So here you are running and hiding and, 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 and carrying everything that you can carry and hiding in the cave because you won't obey God. You are now exposed. And watch this. The provision that God gave you winds up in the hands of the enemy. He's taking God's blessings from you, from me. He's robbing us because he that's the kind of thief that he is. Can you imagine? And we'll move on. God, you praying and asking God for a blessing and he gives it to you. And then you turn around and give it to the devil or allow the devil to take that blessing from you. And then you go back and ask God to bless you with more only to give it to the devil. What are we doing here? Right? We need to make sense. Biblical sense. Of how we are approaching God. But they forfeited their protection. And we could go on. But, but here's something. As long as Israel enjoyed his blessings. They ignored his directives until they hit rock bottom again <laughs> that's how we are we enjoy what God does for us but we won't obey him and we're struggling we're struggling and finally we run into that brick wall and then we come back to God and say I'm sorry and God says okay have compassion, pity on you, bless you, deliver you, get you out of that mess, and then you go right back again and dirty yourself, St become stained or soiled by the world, and then you come back to God. And this cycle, as I read earlier, these cycles continue in the lives of God's people because there is no change at the heart. If you ever want God to deliver you, we should start on it because this is how God works, right? Matthew chapter 6, when you get time. God works from the inside out. So the reason why we're failing, we want God to do all these external things. But sometimes we need internal help. We need heart help. We need attitude help. We need mental help 
help right these kind of deep things that we can't get to right we need help at our core we need help at the very uh, uh, essence of our soul that inner man needs help and you and I can't get to it but God can and provide us the equip and equip us with power that's the only thing the devil understands it's the only thing he respects because he quotes scripture too but he has he can't do anything with the power of God and that's what is available for us present day God was delivering Israel and demonstrating to them that he had the power and as we're going to see in a minute to defeat their enemy they just need to stay with him God has the power to defeat our enemies why would you leave him when we're living in a world right when the book of Ephesians is telling us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood what are we wrestling against spiritual issues wickedness in high places powers adversaries right spiritual adversaries that come against us externally and internally why would you leave the only help you know when God has demonstrated sure these the generation that 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 came up uh, 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 after Joshua didn't know right they didn't see the actual deliverances but 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 that 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 prior generation should have informed them right we are responsible for conveying our miracles to the next generation you need to tell your family members tell your children tell your husband tell your wife tell your neighbor tell your friend tell everybody what the Lord has done for you and the power that it took to get you out of that adverse situation right they desired nothing more from God than his help in escaping the consequences of their sin. God get me out of this stuff. Right? And God knows all the time. He knew that they were going to go back and wallow in sin. Those who forget God's blessings, watch this, are prone to the habitual neglect of Bible study. Right. I ask my Sunday school class and class all the time, did you read the word of God? And did you study it? Did you probe it? Did you pull it apart to see who God is and who we are without him? Jesus said these words, John chapter 15, I believe verse 6, apart from me you can do nothing right it'll come to nothing without the handiwork of God finally encouraged by God right we could get into a lot of questions about the tendencies right that we have to become lax and fail to keep God's goodness and purpose as priorities in their life but I think we have talked about enough some of the issues that and what we're seeing in Israel is simply human nature we are no different from them we're doing the same thing we're practicing the same type of ritual with God God just get me out of this I'll see you see you next time Right, God get me out of that. We're doing the same thing. But if we're going to obey God, disobey God, just know He's going to have a response because He always has and He always will because that covenant will bring Him directly to your address. Right? Pass your locked door and pass your burglar alarm system pass your security guards pass your mean dog and he'll come directly to you 
and to me and question why we have defected from him right Encouraged by God comes from Judges chapter 6 verses 11 through 16 and again from the NIV translation. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizarite where his son Gideon, Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Verse 12, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Verse 13, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, watch this, why has all this happened to us? He's questioning, right? If you are really with us, this shouldn't be happening to us. He is with you. But you're not with him. Right? He is not the problem. We are the problem. Goes on to say. Where are all his wonders. That our ancestors told us about. When they said. Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt. Now you keep in mind. That's what we just read. Right? But now the Lord has abandoned us. And given us into the hand of Midian. Verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of the uh, out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? You notice how God doesn't get involved in that foolish conversation or that that reply that Gideon. He does. Gideon doesn't understand. Right. God doesn't entertain that. Right. God doesn't have to doesn't owe you an explanation. Right? He doesn't owe you a response that, that you think you deserve. Right? But God says, Am I not sending you? So now he has been selected. And I should tell you, God won't change his mind because of how Gideon might feel about the situation. God has come to him purposefully to let him know he has been selected. I got an assignment for you. You're going to go act as a deliverer, a type, right? To deliver my people who are in trouble. Why is God saying they're my people? That covenant, that's covenant language, right? Verse 15, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. This is all human stuff. This is how we think about stuff. This is how we think about our roles. This is how inadequate we feel sometimes. How am I going to be able to do that? When God tells you to do something, he's going to equip you to do that thing. God is telling you the outcome before you even get into it. God is telling you what's going to happen. He's not asking you to participate. He is commanding you to participate. Do you remember Exodus chapter 3? This is part of the, um, the miracle, if you will, or the, the, the response of uh, all the prayers of hundreds of years that had been gone up before God by the Hebrew people and in Exodus chapter 3 God pulls Moses and said I'm ready he calls them my people they don't know they're his people Moses knows because that's what he's telling but they don't understand that language until God demonstrates and comes to Pharaoh and comes to Egypt and demonstrates his deliverance by his miracles and his power identifying the people of God with the covenant of God with the power of God with the deliverance of God and so these individuals now know that this relationship is on Gideon is talking about how inadequate he is how weak he is and how he is the least and so what Gideon is basically saying I, I, I'm not the one to go 
Can you imagine telling God that? I'm not the one. He tells you to go and you know, well, Lord, I'm not the one. Because I got a problem. This this is my problem. And, and you know, you haven't solved this, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to go. This is how we talk. But we are talking to the Almighty God, the Creator. The one who formed us out of the dust. He really remembers when we were nothing. And the least. He saw us before he breathed into our nostrils. And we became living soul. What you think he was looking at at the time? So he knows all of these things. Gideon doesn't know. Look how God replies in verse 16. The Lord answered. I'm not getting into all of that stuff with you. All I'm telling you is, I will be with you. That's what we have to draw from. When we are with the Lord, when the Lord is with us, there is a oneness in commandments. There is a, one, a oneness in obedience to those commandments. God is God. We are his people. And we should keep that continuity flowing in that relationship. Just let him be God. You and I may not understand. Everything that God tells us, but because he is God, <laughs> because he is Yahweh, it doesn't matter what it is. He speaks and we lie down and we die. He speaks and we live again. We need to embrace the fact that we serve an almighty God. I think it's important to realize that when Jesus uh, arose uh, uh, from the dead, he has all power. What does that tell you? There is nothing that he cannot do. Right? So, in every season, and we're going to wrap this up, God always has someone to use for his purposes. Even if they are unaware unprepared and less than confident even though God allowed Israel's oppression he had not abandoned them right it wasn't his fault the nation was still his choice this is something you could take home with you you were still his choice for fulfilling his plan of salvation right and one of the things that I and this is <laughs> This is kind of, uh, you know, hard to sustain in our memory and even in, you know, comprehending the fact that when our parents chasing us, oftentimes they would say they love you. That was hard for me to embrace that concept because what you're doing doesn't feel like love. This strap does not feel like love, but it is love because it's correcting something. It's addressing something. And if there was no love, then you would just let it go. Let the, let the child go. Right? Uncorrected. So things that we love. Right? People that God love. He will, he will come to you in ways that you may not appreciate. But the message is that you belong to me. And I'm concerned about what you're doing. I don't like what you're doing. And I'm doing this because I want you to change it so you can represent me. All right? So I want us to really, you know, Embrace the fact that God knows how inadequate we are without him. But he took us on to save us anyway. God knew who you were before he saved you. But he took you on. Right? He knew who I was. But he took me on anyway. And he saw... A relationship in me and in you that you didn't see and look at you now serving the Lord right loving on Jesus Jesus loving on you God knew that the whole time 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson today, what it uncovers. God, we pray for human nature because we act just like Israel. We treat you, God, sometimes with so much disrespect, so much of a lack of appreciation and gratitude for what you've done already that we dare to overstep your commands and challenge the love that you have for us and we challenge you in ways that you 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 didn't want us to know like that but but we have to be taught that you love us you demonstrate to us even through chastening us that you love us and that you are concerned about the past that we are on and you seek to save us from self-destruction and sometimes we slap your hand because we don't even want the grace that you're providing even to save us. But you keep coming for us and you keep moving up on us even as inadequate, even as Gideon said he was the least. But you thought enough of us to send your only begotten son, the true and only deliverer that can sustain our deliverances, that can sustain the victory in our life, even over sin. Jesus is the only one that has accomplished that task. And for that we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we bless your name for sending such a one. You use many judges, but you finally sent your only begotten son. And he accomplished the task. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray for each and every family today. Thank you for just telling us about ourselves today. And thank you for helping us. Thank you even for forgiving us of the wrongs that we have done. Not just to, to one another, but we have sinned, God, against your nature and against your character, against your holy name. And you woke us up again. You clothed us in our right mind again. You blessed us again. Sometimes we don't even say thank you. Father, but we take this opportunity now to say thank you for every effort that you have made toward our lives. Help us to be mindful and careful to give your name to praise for the balance of our days. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Saints, just know that I love you and praying for you. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.